Ladies and gentlemen, multiple things are happening today. Are right, we doing an accountability check? Come on in. Come join, come join. All right, so once again, we're doing multiple things today, ladies and gentlemen. Accountability checks for the end of our trimester three. Uh, I'm sorry, trimester two, leading into trimester three. Uh, we're going to do our journal checks. Um, so we're going to make sure that we have a reasonable amount of journal entries uh, for the time frame that we've had uh, since the beginning of Unit 3. Unit 3, of course, corresponds with the beginning of our Claudette Coben novel, Twice Towards Justice, which we've just completed, um, which aligns uh, perfectly with the end of trimester two. So, of course, as I specified, the criteria for our journal entries uh, for you to get your maximum amount of points is going to be uh, about 30 to 25 entries equating to a four. All right, 24 to about 18 entries equating to a three. 17 to 10 entries equating to a two. Anything under 10, so nine to zero going to be a one. Okay. So let's say nine to one will be a one. A zero will be zero if you have no journal entries at all. Okay. Um, so I'll be coming around checking that. Um, but you'll have some responsibilities while I'm doing it. You're not twiddling your thumbs. You are being proactive. You're being efficient. You're being responsible. And you're being accountable, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So what that means is I'm going to lead you uh, with giving you a couple of examples. Don't forget Google Classroom has a representation of our um, outline, our expository essay outline, uh, a model that I've created for you. I'll let you put that on the board now so you can double check that model. If you go into Google Classroom, as we communicated, um, under our literature in English language arts topic, you'll see uh, our expository essay outline example. You're going to click on that. You scroll down. You'll see the Google outline, a uh, Google Docs outline. That is my um, example, my model for you. What you. Basically, your paper should look like. And don't forget, I did communicate that although you're doing the paper example, or the paper version, you can do a electronic example for extra credit. Okay? Make sure you're doing both, though. I don't want to just see, I don't want to just see, Jordan, 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 Jordan. Have a seat, please. Have a seat, please. No, can you have a seat, please? I'm not gonna ask you again. Raise your hand. We got hand prompts if you need something. So. Thank you. All right. Also, the essay rubric is uh, positioned there as well on Google Classroom, so you can uh, check that out at any point in time to ensure you're where you need to be uh, with the completion of your. Uh, beginning parts of your, your um, essay, which is your, your introductory paragraph, your thesis statement, so on and so forth. Um, so just looking at our outline example. What you want to ensure is that you have these main components. You selected your um, activist movement. You selected your two activists of all the choices, and you want to have the choices right there in front of you because at any point in time in these, uh, uh, the, this beginning stage of building this essay, you want to, if you change your mind, equal education isn't for me, gun control isn't for me, climate change isn't for me, Black Lives Matter, I uh, talked about it enough. I want to change, you have the options right there. You can go ahead and just jump back on the wagon and grab a new topic and two new activists and keep it, keep it moving. You can do that on your own because you have them right there in front of you and you don't have access to Google Classroom at home. So that's why you want to ensure you have this uh, table on your uh, written, your paper. All right, topic paragraph. This is basically going to be how you're going to show that you are dialed in 100%. I am choosing this topic because, and not a lot of evidence is required. You do not, uh, you don't have to pull anything from the internet, any novels, I don't need any, any, any uh, tough, you know, hard sources here. I just want you to tell me why you are choosing the topic that you're choosing, all right? So I need you to open your backpack. And I need you to pull out whatever papers you have that you've worked on. Because we've been working on this for a couple days now. So whatever you have, go ahead and pull that out before you get a fresh piece of paper. Right, so go ahead and check your back next to see a whole bunch of papers in there. Let's see what you got. You might have something in there. All right. All right. 
So go ahead, again, I'm going to read my topic paragraph to you. I'm going to focus my expository essay on the issue of equal education. You're going to probably choose something different, which is great. Detailing the efforts of two activists. Make sure you specify the two activists that you're choosing. The reason I chose the topic equal education is because it is important for everyone to have access to equal education, which can create pathways to success, skill building, and wealth and legacy establishment within minoritized families. This is what's important to me, and that's what analysis is. We talked about that. How are you viewing this information? How does it resonate with you? How does it connect with experiences that you've had? And how are you connecting it to the overall point of what we're talking about? Whether it's just the, the, the gist of the information, or the characters that are involved, or the historical context, how are you connecting it? Big boy voice. I was wondering if I could read along. You want to read yours? Absolutely. Make sure it's on the good. All right, just use big boy words, all right? Okay. All right, so uh, before you continue, uh, before you start yours, I want to continue here. Um, education has always been a gauge of prominence and culture throughout the communities of the world, right? So I go from what attracted me to this focal point, and then I go into a generalized statement that can impact a greater population, right? Because it's important for this to resonate with you, right? That's going to be how you are vested, what the value is for you, but you also want to connect it with an audience member that may not share your same values, may not come from the places you come from, have the experiences you have, right? So education has always been a gauge of prominence and culture throughout the communities of the world. It is empowering to detail the work of activists that are building ground in its focal area. So before you read yours, and I want everyone to take a minute or two just to review and read to yourselves what your topic paragraph looks and sounds like. Ensure that you covered those bases. You've highlighted your minority, uh, you've highlighted your minority group. I'm sorry, not your minority, minority group, but your uh, movement, which in, in essence probably is a minority group, a minor, a minoritized group, or represent, representing a minoritized group. Make sure you highlight two activists. Make sure you uh, connected it with why you value this topic, and also what might um, connect with a broader audience, a more general audience. Feel good about yours? Okay. Um, both, right? So think about it. Um, so what a prophet asks is gun control a problem or a solution? Right? So the problem with gun control is that it's necessary, right? But there are individuals that feel it is an infringement on their rights, right? So people who own guns they don't like the idea of gun control, right? Because it takes, it, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's restricting in essence, right? Oh, you can't do this with the property that you own, right? Does anyone know what, uh, um, what, the, what um, constitu constitutional right that is, gun control? I think it's that, um, they think they have the right to control the people. You know what that, do you know which one it is? No. So, we got about five seconds of silence right now. Ten seconds of silence. Fifteenth Amendment. All right. We got one, and no, no offense, one incorrect answer, but we can get to a correct answer. I have going on fifteen seconds of silence. So what's my issue with the almost twenty seconds of silence on a general question that I've asked everyone right now? What's my biggest issue with it right now? You're not. I'm sorry. You're not doing what? Searching it up. You're not utilizing the technology that's right in front of you right now, being proactive? Yes. I would like for someone to look up what part of the Constitution gun control relates to right now, instead of staring in the space, but you have the entire galaxy at your fingertips with a Chromebook. Yes. I would like someone to do that. We don't have to guess, right? We talked about this. Guessing is 50-50, and 50% 50 is an F. You literally have technology at your fingertips where you can look up that, and you want to get into that habit. That's college preparatory habits. Your professor's saying something, you want to go ahead and boom, 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 bring it up so you can add something to the discussion, right? The day. 
Second Amendment and says what? the point yes so the right to bear arms the right to arm yourselves protect your family and be able to provide for your family now of course the Constitution was written in what time frame do you remember we talked about this right the revolutionary time frame 1800s maybe maybe a little earlier a little bit 1787 it was, it was, it was ratified in essence but it is a re reflection of the revolutionary time frame, the 1776 time frame, right? Where we got our, we've established ourselves as a sovereign nation. The reason why I'm bringing up that historical context of that document, the Constitution, and the concept of why the Second Amendment is so important is because a lot of the concepts that we'll see with these different movements, gun control, climate control, Black Lives Matter, equal education, are all from a, a earlier time where things are not as diverse as they are now, right? So the reason why these movements are even necessary is because times have changed. So I want you to take that approach and think about that when you're eloquently reading your topic paragraph. Times have changed. There was a point in time when, they, when gun control was not necessary, right? The country was wild, not established, not civilized. People were out hunting buffalo, right? And and saber tooth tigers and all kind of other crazy things, right? You had to, it was, it was wild. So yeah, you had to bear arms. It was a necessity, just like right now, having a uh, mini hand sanitizer in your purse, right? Had to have a rifle with you while you're on horseback. But times have changed, we're a little more civilized now, so you having a firearm on you all the time isn't as necessary. Right? So that's why gun control is a larger, more prominent issue now. But people who own guns, they feel some kind of way. Yeah, you should. They feel some kind of way about that. Infringing more of my rights. But people who do not need, who feel like guns aren't necessary, they're like, hey, people having guns, that's causing problems within our nation. Mass shootings, shootings at schools and malls, people's lo people losing their lives, right? So that's why it's an issue. And each one of these categories has a, a similar story. All right, so let me hear a couple. Israel's gonna go first. Um, a prophet, Nevaeh. All right, and let me have someone else. Let me have four. Someone going once, going twice. I'll popcorn you. You know I will. Thank you very much. All right, give me here. Okay, Israel. And go, you're gonna stand up. He's a big boy, right? Okay. I'm going to focus my on ah, I'm going to focus my uh, exploratory essay on the issue of Black Lives Matter. We know the effort of the two activists, Cory Bush and Madison Crenshaw. The reason I chose the topic of Black Lives Matter is because Black people don't deserve to be taken to be taken for something they don't do. No, no one does. Yes, they don't. Do it. I just don't feel like I just don't feel like this is fair. This is this is why I take my home tonight. Absolutely. Black Lives Matter is because I feel the message needs to get out and a few people are not going to make that happen. 
more easily aid the messenger to get out and more people need to do what's right for themselves. People sitting around doing nothing is not going to change and is, is not going to change how they feel about the world. This is why I chose these two activists and why I choose to write about this topic Black Lives Matter. Good job, good job. Right. Here. I'm, going to, I'm going to focus my expository essay on the issue of gun control, detailing the efforts of Black Lives Matter and their side in major problems. The main part of this topic goes to the because there are many shooters and many people dying because of them. How connected to this topic is because we need to live our life and not die a young age because of gun violence. This is why I picked the gun control. Yeah, actually, let's do one more from you. All right. I'm going to focus my expository. Expository? Yeah, think, think expose or expose, right? I mean, show some information, give us some insight. All right, essay on the issue of Black Lives Matter. Detail two new activists, George Floyd and Ronald Kagan. The reason I choose is because a lot of racism goes around the world and it won't stop. And all, a lot of people kill black people as policemen and also homicide. It goes around the world. And I think Black Lives Matter should be of all around the world, so a lot of all black people have to have to go to racism. Mm -hmm. All right. So now that you've identified your topic, your activist, where you're going with this, what was the next stage? Uh, sources. Sources, right? So what you should have established are four sources. I'm just going to break this down a little bit so we can see it on one page. Right, so, so I have, yeah, we're going to share sources momentarily, but of course, what I wanted you to do is just a very basic uh, process of acquiring uh, the, the, the origins of where you're going to get your information, right? So what we did first and foremost is what? What was the first stage of uh, looking up um, our sources? What did we do first? Uh, find the names, uh, find the source for the main topic. Right, how do we go about that? What was the, what was the process? Like, you would type in, like, what Right, so we went to a search engine. We primarily used Google, right? You mm -hmm. typed into Google your topic, right? Or maybe your activist, and we talked about different methods of exploring that information, right? Not just typing in the name, but going a little more thorough with our search, right? What was the process of that? The movement, right? Or the area, right? The area that you wanted to focus on in relation to that individual's name, all right? Because the issue is that the internet, again, as I mentioned, you have the entire galaxy at your fingertips. So you type in something like Corey Bell, and you're going to get every single Corey Bell that has any type of digital footprint, right? And that could be a little exhausting. So to be a little more specific in our search, you're going to type in Corey Bell uh, with association to Black Lives Matter. And then you'll get the association uh, with that individual and that movement. It's Bush. Oh, Bush. I apologize. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so, does anyone have at least two sources that they can communicate right now? So, I chose gun control, and my first source is refinery29.com, and it's I March to M. And the next one is assembly.org. <coughs> and it's our daily reality of gun violence in Q&A with teen activist Edna Joy. Awesome. The third one is tuxdaily.com. David Hogg on ending gun violence, building a movement, and his future mm, Nice. So uh, what, what she did there, uh, I really appreciate, is her first source was just generally about the topic. Right, um, and the second source was as well. The third source was more specific to the actual activist in relation mm -hmm. to the topic. So you do want to make sure that at least two of your sources are going to be focused on those two activists. Where you have it, it, maybe it's a bio biography or an interview, um, maybe it's what uh, relationship they have to the movement, work that they've done, um, their um, their uh, 
the approach in activism, something that centers around that activist in relation to the movement, not just movement. Because the trouble you're going to run into if you do not look up sources that directly connect to the activist is when you go to write your essay, you're going to just be writing about the movement, you're not going to know where to put any information about that activist, right? So I'm just going to jump back to our community sources. So remember, we jumped on a community source um, blog here, and everyone took the, um, took the liberty of adding one of their sources here. So the key information that we needed, and I appreciate um, our two scholars for sharing, is the title of the document or the website or the video, whatever type of source it is, the creator, author, or publisher, the date that it was published, the actual website, so you can reference it back. Now, that was, in essence, the elementary form of that. What we're going to look at is the appropriate way that we're going to start to build our works cited page, our bibliography. So what I want everyone to do, everyone should have their Claudette Coven out. Go ahead and open your Claudette Coven to the end of the book, right after the um, afterword. The afterword ends on page 124. Everyone should be on page 124, 125. So in order for this novel to happen, go ahead and give me a hand signal if you're where we need to be. Page 124, 125. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Waiting for a couple. Getting there, getting there. Awesome. 124, 125. Appreciate it. Okay. So. In order for this novel, Claudia Coven, Twice Towards Justice, for this to happen, a lot of information was needed. Now, who here thinks that uh, our author just wrote this? He woke up and he was like, you know what? Claudia Coven's cool. I'm just going to write a whole bunch of stuff, right? He just sat down on a notepad and just started writing about how he felt, what he thought, what he saw at the window, what he wanted the movement to be like. Who, th who thinks that this is how that novel came about? Who thinks that the author probably had to do a lot of research, right? And so in the process of doing that research, and I, I agree with you, I think that you're absolutely right if you think the author had to do a little bit of research, right? Because we talked about this, that's your credential, right? While this author may have a number of novels under his belt, he may have extensive education, right? He still needed more information to solidify that he was, he just even had the, the, the grounds to have this conversation, to cover this information, right? Just as you do as well. So I want you to think about this. Just like this author who has probably a ton of education and a lot of novels under his belt had to cite other sources for information to say this is why it's legitimate, you do as well, right? Because you haven't been around long enough. You haven't done enough things for what you say to be law. So that's why we use the positions of others who have maybe a little more credential or a little more experience, right, to solidify our thoughts. And that's totally okay as long as you do it appropriately. And that's what this is here on page 25, a bibliography. Can everybody use that word? Say bibliography. Bibliography. All right, you know, it can also be uh, labeled as a works cited page, right? And you'll get to that when you get to high school and college. Works cited when you start to do research papers. Everywhere where you have works that you've looked at to get information from, you're going to cite them, right? Citing evidence. And that will be a works cited page, and it's going to be pretty similar. Work cited, bibliography, you're basically listing all the places you pulled information from, giving credit to those sources. And that helps you avoid the area of plagiarism, where you're using someone else's work without their permission. You do not want to get into that 
tub, all right? It's hot, it's hot tub. Burn, burn you real good, right? You want to get in the habit of giving credit because that's good. It's a great thing. And it frees you up to explore and utilize a plethora of sources of information. Anything and everything under the sun is at your disposal if you give credit to the source. Let's go ahead and look at the first three uh, sources there. And I want someone, and I can take about 10 seconds, 15 seconds, take a look at those first three sources there, the bottom of 125. And what do they have in common? Let's take a look at the sources. When you see something that they have in common, give me a silent hand. Do you feel like you're, com you're comfortable sharing what you think that they have in common? AP. Right. So what I think um, all three sources have in common is that like basically like both of them are like old, like very, very old. Okay. So they have historical context. Yeah? yeah? Okay. What else? And think about not only the um the source in and of itself, but the but the structure of these three sources on this page right here. Think about it from that perspective as well. I think they're all more about the movement rather than politics. Mm, interesting. Okay. So historical context, more a general overview as opposed to being specific about the person. Yep. What else? Anyone else? Any other observations about these three sources here? How about the actual structure? Well, see, what I've got is that they're talking about specific people. And the first one says Grant Taylor. The second one says Grow, Gerald, David J. And then Fred Gray. But I don't see Carter Coven, Moody Hart. I just see these three. I mean, well, two men and one woman. Well, that's a great observation. So, what do you think those names are at the very beginning of our? Sources. What do you think those names are? Are those who the information is about, or perhaps are they someone else? Oh, um, those are the people who made the articles. Of the those are the people who created or, or cultivated or published the source, right? So it's a little different than what we did in our very basic um, account of our sources, right? We looked at getting the name of the article first, and the reason why I wanted you to do that so you can easily find it, right? You're looking online. Oh, the gun control act. I know. Oh, Orchard's People's Project with uh, Yara uh, Shahadi, right? Um, when we're doing this in a more academic capacity, a more professional capacity, we're going to give credit to our source first, right? Last name, comma, first name. All right. So I want you to look at your sources. And I want you to consider that. I'm going to give you a sticky note right now. And you're going to take one of your sources and you're going to attempt to write it out to where it mirrors the works that are in the bibliography. Okay? You can take one and pass it. You're going to stick that on your um, expository essay outline. Let me get a couple more for you. So go ahead and keep passing them around. Take it on sticky notes, haven't gotten the back, huh? It's still in there, floating out there somewhere. Well, if you have one of my sticky note packs, you can go ahead and whip that out and share that with people. That might have exhausted my supply. So that should be enough for everyone to have one from that uh, stack there. So keep it moving. Take one. Keep it moving. So once again, what you're doing is you're looking at your sources that you've started to uh, notate on your on your outline. You're going to take one of them and you're going to try to write it out to where it mirrors your bibliography and call it COVID.
First thing that we've noticed is what again? What's the first thing we noticed about the bibliography referenced in Claudette Coven? What's listed first? Last name and first name of the the author, in essence, yes. So you're going to find the author for the source that you have now. Remember, some of our sources didn't have authors, right? They had what? They had organizations or publishers, right? So it's going to be the same thing. And if it's going to be an organization, an entity, a publisher, then you're going to list the, the full name of that entity. You don't have to do first name, last name first or anything like that. For instance, for my first source here, Gun Control Act, right? That didn't have, and I'll go ahead, I'll go ahead and just go back to the article, right? The website here, bless you. All right, make sure you mask it on there. All right. Make sure it's over your nose, pinch it on your nose. Keep going, I appreciate it. All right, Gun Control Act, great information. Doesn't necessarily have an author, but I know that it's created by the site, which is the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Explosives. Um, so I'm going to list that as um, the author. Now, it won't necessarily be reflected the same way, though. Yes, great job. Yep. Everyone's going to try it out. Then we're just going to double check and make sure that we are doing it the way it needs to be done. And I'm going to actually put an example up from our. From our awesome lesson plan, um, we're going to just look at examples right now. Alright. So as we can see, these are examples for uh, internet websites. Now, remember we talked about the alcohol, alcohol uh, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, alcohol, tobacco Firearms and Explosives, right? It doesn't have a traditional author, so it would be the name of the article first, which is the Gun Control Act, and then it would be the organization, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Then it would be the date of publication or the last date of review. So remember, if I scroll down here, I looked at the bottom. Last date of review is October 21st, 2022. Why am I using the last date of review as opposed to the first day it was probably written? I gave an example of this not too long ago when I talked about all four of the movements and things that have changed historically. Why am I going to use the last date? Because how do you say back then we have firearms on you all the time. Mm -hmm. But now it's not as necessary because you don't either kill Bulls or bulls. So basically, things have what? Evolved. Yeah, things have changed. Things have evolved. So the last review date may mean that there's been changes. They've added things. So I want to reference the last date that it's been looked at, it's been touched in essence, to ensure that it has the most up to date information. I'm reflecting that. There may have been a review in 1976. I don't know. I don't want the Gun Control Act book that's represented in 1976. Although it should be um, pretty consistent if this Gun Control Act was created in 1968, but that's irrelevant. We'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll blaze over that. So it is going to be the Gun Control Act by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, October 21st, 2022, or October 2022. And then the website. All right, some of your websites are pretty long, so I don't expect you to write them all out right now.
That's the website. Britannica.com will be the website. That's the last thing that's going to be listed. Right? So, yeah, if it's a website, something.com, www.https, uh, colon, forward slash, forward slash, any of that, those are all websites. That's where you identify. So, because you're looking from the Chromebook, your, all of your sources are going to be, in essence, web sources. All right? Now, you may stumble upon a different type of source by going onto a particular website. There may be a book, a novel, an article, or something of that nature. Right, you're probably going to find the web version of it though, so it's still going to be a website in essence, but there may be a paper version out there where it will look a little different. So let's look really quickly at if you were going to do a printed work. Like for instance, what novel do they have referenced here? Our Claudette Coven novel, yep. So go ahead and look on your Claudette Coven novel, see if you can find this information. Where do they get all of this information from? Where did they get the author's name? Do you have the identity, the, uh, the location of the author's name? Raise your hand, real quick. Come on, come on. Everybody, should have a hand raised. Author's name. If you see where the author's name is, raise your hand. Thank you. You guys, where's the author's name? Where is it though? On the title. Right. It's on the front. Easy. How about the title? Raise your hand if you know where they got the title of the printed work from. Still see a couple of hands not raised. Raise your hand if you know where they got the title of the printed work from. Right. This is more so a check of you paying attention and a check of you knowing where the title is. You should know where the title is. Right? There we go. There we go. Where's the title of the book? On the front. It's right there. It's the biggest thing on there, right? All right, how about this? This is a little more challenging. New York. All right? Uh, Melanie Koopa, uh, Koopa Books. Where do they get that information from? I don't see it on the front. On the back. Let's see. Well, we're looking for this. They, uh, they put this one here. New York, uh, Melanie Krupa Books, Farrier Strait, Grooks, Grooks, Grove, maybe Grove. Uh, 2009. Where are they getting that information from? Check inside the book on the back. Let me know when you have it. Also, that 2009 is important. All right, Nayla, where are they getting that information from? Right? So you're going to look inside the book, and they're going to have that secondary title inside the book, which usually has the publisher's information in there. Right? And so that's going to be the publisher's information. Right? I found it right there um, and different versions of books may have different information right so there can be they might be using a different version of Claudia Coven's novel than the one we have right now okay this they could be using a different edition which could have a different date publishing date um, but if I'm looking for this specific publisher's information um, I'm looking on Right inside this novel, this title page here, if you turn to the next page where it has a whole bunch of information there, it has the publisher's information, it has the um, ISBN number, which is the universal library number, right? You see that right there. If you look um, right under where it says an imprint of Macmillan, it has square fish there, right? Then it has uh, printed in the United States of America, that's a whole lot of information there. It's difficult to know what exactly you're going to use, it but it says originally published. Right there, that's that third paragraph down. And it's in the United States by Melanie Krupa Books, an imprint of Ferrier Strauss Grow. I'm say that's Grow. Um, and it gives the date of 2011, though. So more than likely, the example they're using here is a previous edition. Right, it may have been updated. Maybe the edition they have here didn't have the afterword in it, right? Maybe it didn't have the, um, more like they had the, the epilogue, um, but there, it could maybe just have something, some acknowledgements or something. If they add anything to the book, then that's going to be a new publishing date. So that might be an earlier novel that didn't have like an afterword in it or the Q&A, right? The interview, something like that. Okay.
So don't get thrown off too much when you see examples like that. Like my date's different because it's going to be different if they're adding things to it. They're adding things to it. They're doing different things. Okay. Well, what we're focusing on is ensuring that our sources. All of us should have at least two sources at this point in time. That our sources are going to be now constructed in this capacity. And I'm going to put this example for you on Google Classroom. For if you're using a print work, if you're using a um, an article. Article would be like in a magazine um, or in a newsletter or a newspaper or of course for the internet websites. And the majority of you naturally are going to use the internet website because we're establishing our sources from our Chromebooks. But as you can see, our two examples here are one with an actual author, last name first or one that doesn't have an author per se, but it has a publisher, which is for here, Our Climate Voices. For me, it would have been the Bureau of Alcohol, Alcohol Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Doesn't have a, an author, but it is published by that website. So I'm gonna put the, the title first. This one here with an author, the title goes second. This here without the author, And technically, our uh, climate uh, climate voices that can be in essence that might be um, the location where they've gotten the information from. I'm not sure. I would have to check that source. And you can look that up if you want to. www.ourclimatevoices.org. 